This video contains disturbing content, violent content, jump scares, and sudden loud noises. Viewer discretion advised. Thanks to indie game developers, we horror fans can play some of the weirdest and scariest games out there on our PCs for absolutely free. After Slender's success, a good number of indie horror games were released for Windows. While many were outright clones of the original, there were some decent titles that had a good plot, excellent graphics, and brilliant level design. The games that we're going to cover are definitely some titles you should check out for yourself. And while not all the games are groundbreaking, they still deserve some sort of play, especially if you're a horror fan like us. So let's get to it. The Top 85 Freeware Horror Indie Games. Courage. Courage pitched you as a test subject called James, who is injected with a biological serum. You need to escape the laboratory before the whole thing affects you, and that sounds well and fine. However, Courage relies on a bunch of cheap jump scares, such as a few Google images as well as characters from other games. Don't let it fool you though, because there are some pretty tense moments, and when everything is quiet only for an enemy to suddenly appear right in front of you. Like the game's title, Courage is all about from getting point A to point B, without getting too scared. Can you beat it? The following. The following is a very creepy game that is sure to leave your hair standing on end. It takes place inside of dark halls, and it's black and white, which makes it even more creepy. Plus, what's in the distance can appear blurred, so you're never exactly sure of what it is that's in front of you. Throughout the game, you're followed by a very tall monster that seeks to back you into a dead end in which there is no escape. The following uses the same tactics of luring the player into a false sense of security with its claustrophobic halls and dark atmosphere. The plot of the game is to steal eight chairs before Layla catches you, but unfortunately, once it does catch you, there really isn't much you can do to escape. White Finger White Finger is a short survival horror game where you wake in a basement of a warehouse with no memory of how you arrived. Your only goal is to do one thing, escape. White Finger starts as a basic survival game, wandering corridors and hallways with fluorescent lights. That's until you meet the Slasher, a chainsaw-wielding monster who pursues and attacks you relentlessly. Unfortunately, the scare factor is somewhat ruined slightly by having a rave song play whenever the monster is chasing you. What they should have done was well, have some sort of orchestra score, or even a simple heartbeat sound that got faster the closer the monster gets to you. However, that being said, the game is still pretty scary, especially when you're getting chased. UNEXIT like many other horror games, Unexit is set in a sewer or a tunnel system. The player must wander through the level, coming across various objects, creepy sounds, and terrifying monsters. Before too long though, things start to get much more sinister. Much of the screen is obscured by darkness, so navigation of the level can be fairly difficult, but the twisted corridors and pop-ups can be particularly scary to any gamer who dares to play. Illusion Ghost Killer Based off the intensely popular creepypasta, Illusion doesn't fail to scare the daylights from its players. A short but sweet game, your objective is to place six cameras around the vicinity to capture Jeff on film. Unfortunately, the idea sounds good on paper, but the overall execution of the game leaves a lot to be desired. 
There are no health packs, and there are no way to defend yourself. <laughs> Secondly, the fact that Jeff seemingly teleports on the player with really bad character animations and designs really makes the game feel a lot less polished. The sound design doesn't really go do the game justice, but there's no harm in trying out the game for yourself. Remember, it's free. <laughs> Phobia, the fear of darkness. Phobia, the fear of darkness is a survival first-person horror game where you have to complete a variety of puzzles in a creepy environment in order to find out the story of a simple house. Phobia is an interesting idea with a creepy atmosphere, but it has a poor game design with music that sounds like it's used from other fictional games like Penumbra. Some love it, while some excruciatingly hate it. Where Am I is a project by indie developer Mark Hadley, creator of the original Slender. Where Am I mirrors Slender's straightforwardness and mounting foreboding tension. The disorientation grows as you walk, your vision scrambling with a static effect and hallways seemingly opening and closing on their own. Like Slender, Where Am I uses sound really well to heighten your tensions as you explore. There is nothing to find here except the scare that the game builds up to over its short five minutes or so. Where Am I is scary, but the claustrophobic corridors are not as iconic or memorable as the forest and buildings of Slender. Don't look now. Players control a man who begins the game standing at the grave of his lover. After finding a handgun, he descends into the underworld to find the spirit of the deceased and lead her back out to safety. Players have infinite chances to repeat each of the game's screens, and the screen must be replayed if the player makes contact with an enemy or a hazard, and also if the player turns the man to face his lover once she's been rescued. Evil. Evil is a strange little game where visuals are reminiscent of that of a chalkboard style graphics. The plot of the game signifies that you're trapped in evil's mind. And there's no escape. Evil is an attempt at reproducing what's already been done rather than adding something new to the gaming horror genre. It does whatever it has to do to have a scary atmosphere with creepy background music filled with screamers. The result is a mix of cry of fear and afraid of monsters, but some moments will have you scratching your head, especially with the video room and the platforming segments. While the idea is there, the game unfortunately suffers from numerous bugs, technical glitches, but still, it's free, and if you want to try out evil for yourself, it'll always be there for you to try out. Mental. Mental is a indie horror game created in the FPS creator that takes place in an asylum which a player must escape. Through exploring the asylum you must collect various keys, key cards that will unlock various doors. The game has a very nice atmosphere, scares, and random noises. Without giving too much away, the game should be one that you definitely should pick up. Delirious. Delirious is a horror mystery game set in a forest called Little Creek. You play as Phineas Simpson, who wakes up unexpectedly to find himself in one of the cabins in the forest. As you explore the old abandoned mansion, you realize that you are simply not alone. Delirious has several buildings that you can enter, and while there's no music in the game, the constant howling of the wind can be unnerving, especially when you're looking around corners. 
Delirious is an interesting game, not filled with chases, but for players who'd like to explore and discover, much like the Haunted House attraction. Donald, a horror story. The plot of this game is a bit vague. You visit your friend Donald in an asylum after he murdered six people, but you end up finding something truly disturbing. Gameplay wise, it's an action survival FPS with horror elements thrown in. Parts of the game look very good and the sound design does its job, but unfortunately it's nothing to write home about. Certain models are lacking textures, and one of the models itself looks ported straight from dead space. You do get a weapon, however, but you'll find it's very ineffective at killing any of the monsters, so your only hope is to avoid them at all costs before they rip you apart. Donald A Horror Story could have been a great game if more time went into fixing the bugs and mechanics. However, if you're still after a horror experience, Try this one out for yourself. The Rake Hostel The Rake Hostel is a game based on the creepypasta creature of the same name. It is also made by the same person who created the Rake Return to the Asylum. The true objective of the game is not clear, but the atmosphere and lack of light and the jump scares make this a truly terrifying game. The game is very similar to Slenderman Shadow, using the same gameplay and the same style and some of the same ideas. Cold Fusion Cold Fusion takes place in Alaska. You are sent to an abandoned research facility called Gemini, where all contact has been lost. Your mission is to find out exactly what happened. The game contains a dreary atmosphere, as lights are flickering and hallways and tables are unturned. You'll come to realize that the more you play, you'll soon find out that there is something else crawling around the complex. There are plenty of dark areas and good sound design. The slowness of the character makes each corridor all the more unnerving and suspenseful. While the game is quite short, it's still one to try out. Devil's Tuning Fork Devil's Tuning Fork is a first-person exploration puzzle game in which the player must navigate an unknown world using visual sound waves. The Devil's Tuning Fork allows the player to explore a new mode of perception through sound visualization. The player takes the role of an unnamed child who has fallen into a coma at a time when a strange epidemic of children falling into comas is taking place. Upon waking up, you find yourself in a strange alternate reality composed of total darkness, with the only thing providing you with any simple ability to see being sound waves. Within the first minute of play, you will acquire an item that allows you to produce sound waves to see around in the dark with. Your goal is to explore your strange and haunting environments, rescue the souls of the other children trapped here, and escape from whatever unfriendly entity that may have chosen to keep you all hostage here. The game focuses on puzzle aspects, platforming and exploring, and features a haunting soundtrack that draws you into the loneliness of the place you're exploring. Inferos, A Thief's Tale Inferos, A Thief's Tale is a first-person survival horror game that utilizes a random level generator, ensuring a new layout every time. The game aims to scare the player using a fully immersive and atmospheric environment with unique enemies. It brings in elements of stealth, action, and shooter games together to make an exciting and challenging first person experience. The atmosphere is dark and intense with a soundtrack that is just as foreboding. The player has to creep around the arcane subterranean tomb in search of ghosts and to exorcise them and 
collect their valuable souls. Purgatory. Purgatory is set in a labyrinth with seemingly no way out. The player must roam the halls of the darkness trying to escape. In Purgatory, foul creatures inherit the shadows, and it's up to the player to outrun them. Purgatory's set design makes every corridor look the same after a while, and the monsters themselves, while providing some decent jump scares, are difficult to outrun. While the gameplay may be lacking, the game makes up for this with some really good sound design, enough to chill you. Stonewick Manor Stonewick Manor is a polished 3D puzzle game that doesn't really take too long to reach the ending. In this particular adventure, you'll be facing creepy cherub statues that move on their own accord when you're not directly looking at them. The gameplay scheme isn't innovative. It requires you to find a couple of keys and then obtain three colored gems to be able to escape the manor. The game itself isn't terribly scary, which is good, because the exploration and atmosphere is what makes Stonewick Manor a really decent freeware indie horror game. Resolute Dark Resolute Dark is a 3D horror game by Redev Games that puts the player in a kid's shoes, experiencing various horrors in order to find his parents in a dark house. The game is full of frightening scenes, random scares, and chilling ambient noises that you're sure to feel down your spine. The game starts out with the kid sleeping peacefully with a low-lit room. The kid wakes up to a demonic voice, leading into some odd noises, screams, and a power outage. With no power, the game will have lighting from a flashlight. The kid is frightened and worried that something may have happened to his parents, so he ventures off to learn what happened. Creepy Zone This game is all of your worst nightmares and your favorite creepy passes put into one. Creepy Zone was made by 1-Bit Games, the same company who made the Rake games. As for the game itself, it's a very interesting experiment of surreal environments. Quite a few character models are in the game and look pretty gruesome and disturbing to say so myself. <laughs> However, they don't harm you. The gameplay is more or less an experience rather than a game, similar to Dear Esther. Think of this game as a haunted house simulator. And if that doesn't scare you away, then you're in for some good fun. Check out The Creepy Zone. The Theater The Theater is a horror game based on the gaming creepypasta of the same name. It's pretty short, you. but it is very Please creepy enjoy and very movie. weird. You're at a theater and there's only one NPC, a doorman, who will always say, Thank you. Thank you. Please, Please enjoy, enjoy the, movie. the movie. If you enter the theater, you'll instantly be put back at the entrance again. Many players actually think that the game is glitched, but this isn't the case. If you keep continually entering the theater, strange things will begin to happen. Without giving too much away, it's safe to assume that the game gets weirder and weirder the more you play. The Unknown The Unknown is a randomly generated chasm of nightmares. Every corner will be full of illusions and scares. The game is meant to be played a number of times in order to get the full effect. Due to the nature of the game, sometimes you'll get an easier playthrough than others. This game is an exploration style with the feeling of panic and hopelessness that comes from being lost, both mentally and physically. You must find a way to escape the labyrinth, but be careful. Fear is your worst enemy. Quolrophobia. 
Chlorophobia plays much like the original Slender. The original purpose of the game was a test environment for Unity 3D and a prank game for a friend named Rolo. As the title suggests, Cholrophobia is the fear of clowns, and in this short freeware indie game, players will need to collect various items like toys and notes and activate disturbing TVs, all while haunted by an evil clown named Rolo. The player wanders the environment while using the lights as a pathway to different locations. Rolo will only appear once the player has collected enough items. Despite his intimidating appearance, however, the player cannot truly escape him because of his unpredictable patterns and speed. Slender, a first-person horror game that has been viewed as both incredibly gimmicky and groundbreaking. In Slender, players are placed in a forest at night with nothing but a flashlight and a limited battery, with on-screen instructions saying to collect eight pages. There are landmarks around the park that hold these pages, but the players aren't given a map or anything to help guide them, so you're pretty much wandering aimlessly, hoping that you'll run into one. After you collect your first page, Slenderman appears somewhere on the map, and a steady, pulsing beat reminds you every second of his presence. As you collect more pages, Slenderman gets faster and the music gets far more intense. Unfortunately, Slender quickly loses its effectiveness once you realize and understand the patterns, but its soundtrack is really good at building atmosphere and tension. Despite any of its criticisms, Slender has inspired more than a few indie devs, and people are still coming up with Slender-esque offerings even to this day. Homesick. Homesick achieves something universal because it forces you to experience the inherent terror and tragedy that only the most cliched of horror cliches could give you. Your only goal is to escape the house, and there is only one locked door inside the small home, but the keys randomly spawn throughout the house, in one of the many cupboards, drawers, dressers, closets, or beds, so it's never really in the same place twice. The lighting creates an atmosphere of dread, and total darkness is quite oppressive. Your mouse cursor acts as a flashlight beam, so to look around the room you have to physically move the mouse around the room. This wonderful 2D survival horror was developed by Cole Segal, and definitely is a game that you should play. Lasting. Lasting is a pixelated indie horror game where you must search rooms to find discs and keys to unlock other doors. The game features a very creepy atmosphere and some truly terrifying jump scares. Lasting is an interactive experiment in claustrophobia developed in 2012, and the map and events generate randomly, so everyone's experience is different. Lasting also had the option to post your high scores to the web, that's if you're a member of Game Jolt. Due to the random nature of the game, some people will just be lucky and have higher scores. Dead Lab. Dead Lab is a haunting and thrilling horror indie first person shooter. Dead Lab tells the tale of a mysterious infection breakout deep underground in Unilab 6. Sam, an unfortunate survivor, wakes up and finds himself alone with nowhere to escape. He is contacted by a mysterious man over radio who offers him help. Now you just gotta get your ass out of there. Dead Lab features intense cinematic sequences, haunting music, and a very unique setting. The combat may feel a little iffy at times, but you should be able to get used to it fairly quickly. Despite its short length, it delivers a unique experience that you won't soon forget. Stalked. Stalked is a game developed by Hendrik Schiffer, 
The aim of the game is to search for a switch, use it, and finally escape out of the bunker through the elevator. The whole time, the player is stalked by an unknown entity throughout the level. Stalked concentrates on giving players jump scares, a dense atmosphere, and a feeling of extreme isolation. Throughout most of the game, a constant heartbeat is heard. This is to signify where the entity is within the level. Because of the black void that is in front of the player at all times, a certain paranoia can occur, where the player will believe the entity to be somewhere lurking inside of the darkness, ready to pounce. The game's length is quite short, but it's an excellent intro to indie horror games, to be sure. Euthanasia. This is a free indie first-person horror shooter with 10 full playable levels. You play as an ex-soldier who lost his legs in a taxi accident and was then confined to a wheelchair. You are assigned to a mental hospital after trying to kill yourself. A compassionate doctor gives you a lethal injection, and after you die, the game starts. For the most part, it takes place in a run-down hospital. It's atmospheric, dark, and scary. You always feel haunted, like someone, or something, is watching you. And you never know what lurks around the next corner. However, despite its sinister setting, there's been a bit of a negative reception to this game when it comes around, due to the amount of bugs and glitches found within. Things such as invisible enemies and weapon and item pickups, even when they're essential like keys, can make the game less scary and more annoying than anything. The Corridor The Corridor starts off with players waking up from a sense of anxiety, leaving their room, and finding themselves in a long dark hallway. Playing with the common fear of hotels, long hallways, and deafening silence usually at night, the corridor places players in a first-person view and manages to convey us the anxiety that the main character talks about in the beginning of the adventure. The more we walk, the stranger things become, up to a point where it doesn't seem like a hotel anymore, but a place of nightmares. The corridor must be played at night, with headphones on to enjoy the full effect. It's not for the faint of heart, but it makes for a more surreal experience than some of the other horror indie games. Usually as far as the fear factor goes, there are sadly not enough scares to truly class this game up there with the likes of some of the other titles on this list. Dreamwalker Dreamwalker sets a player in a desolate dream world where a parent is crying and begging for a lost child. As the player wanders the landscape, they'll see a demonic twisted child that will give chase. The player must collect pieces of paper that will form a picture of a pentagram and then return to a lone tree in the middle of the level. If the player is captured by the demonic child, they'll wake from their slumber, only to find evil entities in their own home. Imbalance. Imbalance is a unusual horror game if you've never experienced many games on your own. You enter various places, some being creepier than others. You only have a flashlight to explore the darker areas, and you must explore all the areas while finding various notes, similar to Slenderman the Eight Pages. The only enemies in the game's dark mists are unable to kill you, and all they really do is teleport you to different places, stopping you from completing the game, and making this one rather lackluster in my opinion. Force 2 Force 2 is a remake of the 2012 version of the original Forest. 
with much better graphical improvement. The game itself is built much like Slender. There isn't much to the story of the game other than the fact that you're being stalked by a long-haired woman. You need to collect souls scattered around the forest while avoiding her. Once you collect enough, you'll be able to find a way to banish her for good. Unlike Slender, Force 2 has no music and relies on background ambience to immerse a player, which is a much love plus in our opinion. Leah. Leah isn't considered a full game by any means. You play as Oliver, a grieving teen who lost his little sibling from an accident. The ghosts are not trying to kill you, but rather show you what happened in Leah's last hours. There are newspaper clippings along with handwritten drawings and notes to be found to continue the game. Leah does an excellent job with atmospheric scares, and has all of the elements that make it a great story and gaming experience. Leah can be completed in as little as 20 minutes, but we suggest taking your time and enjoying yourself. Project Hands Up created one of the best atmospheric indie horror games out there. Inside. A pretty decent indie game, which has a quite a few jump scares. Inside uses the utility 3D engine and requires the player to scavenge the building looking for a key. Each corridor is dark, and more often than not, the player will be stalked by a red mannequin figure and a sinister demon. There are quite a number of jump scares and sudden noises to keep the player on their toes, but the ending is a little disappointing. Basically, if you're afraid of the dark, this is the indie game for you. Calm Time Calm Time is a short, indie, freeware horror game created by Goose Entertainment. Calm Time is anything but what the name suggests. This 3D horror game sets a somber mood and starts with a innocent house and a simple party that turns into something rather disturbing. Calm Time turns you into a killer, whether you want to or not, and sends you throughout the mansion hunting down guests one by one, all while trying to stay calm. Calm Time really has no plot to the game other than hunting people down. The somewhat lack of a story provides a surprisingly chilling experience. The Witch's House Created by Fumi and translated by VG Person, this free indie horror adventure, The Witch's House, combines the surreal creepiness of Ebe with tricks and traps, and a whole lot of gore. As 13-year-old Viola, you awaken to find yourself in a strange forest. The way out of the woods is blocked by a wall of red roses, but there's a house with a door opened wide and welcome. Viola's got no other choice but to head in. The witch's house may have some moments of masterful terror, but for the most case it's about being shocking. The story winds up taking a backseat to providing an experience somewhat like going through a theme park haunted house. Just when you think you have it pegged as a slow, subtle crawl through surreal imagery, it turns into an absolutely crazy chase sequence. The downside is that some of the clues for solving puzzles can be almost too vague to the point where they blend into the background with all the other useless interactive objects you can find, and wrapping your head around each obstacle's strange logic can usually mean a few fatal tries. The Witch's House is a gordy, moody, fantastic little adventure to spend an evening with. Especially when the lights turned down, and your speakers turned up. Baby Blues Baby Blues is a horror game created by indie developer Kumi, in which you play as a little child searching for his belongings in the middle of the night. Those belongings happen to be his stuffed teddy bears, of which he has nine in total. This is a mystery horror game. You need to find all the teddy bears before heading to bed, while holding a map drawn by yourself, which includes the plans to the house. The game has a fantastically oppressive atmosphere, right from the beginning, 
and most of the credit here can be given to the audio work. You'll just feel vulnerable and totally exposed at almost all times, and it sets the stage wonderfully for all the scares to come. Baby Blues hits all the right notes for a good scare fest. It's genuinely terrifying, proving once again that atmosphere is the heart of horror. Haunt. There are so many Slenderman games out there, and this one is one of the best, so it had to be included on our list. The main character is an unnamed male protagonist who comes across an abandoned pickup truck outside the fenced-off Green Park in Poland. The truck's origins are unknown, but the portfolio the character finds on top of the truck belongs to a Nazi scientific project known as Project Haunt. In curiosity, the unnamed male ventures into the park to investigate the whereabouts of the organization's members and their discoveries by collecting a set of ten documents and photographs, as well as keys to locked off locations within the park's grounds. The objective of the game is to collect 13 scraps of the notes while avoiding the infamous Slender Man. As you don't have a map, you must use the maps on the billboards to find your way around the park. Vanish is maybe one of the most difficult indie horror games out there, but it is equally as terrifying. It's set in a maze of abandoned sewers, where the player is being chased frantically by a monster. The atmosphere is very well done. Tunnels aren't very well lit, the pipes are rattling, and there's a suspicious clicking just somewhere off in the distance. The fact that the player is told nothing about what is going on or what in the world they're even doing is an intentional design choice on the developer's part. The only way to proceed is to pick your favorite tunnel and start walking. The story, what little of it there is, is explored through markings and messages spread throughout the tunnels. In its current version, the game ostensibly has an ending. However, it has a reputation for destroying the players who play it with its choking atmosphere and eerie sound effects, as well as a nice selection of jump scares. Infantata Infantata is an indie horror game that takes place in an abandoned mansion. Your goal is to explore it and find keys to unlock other parts of the mansion. There's a monster that seeks to hunt you, but you're unable to actually see it. You'll notice its presence when the creepy music starts playing, and if it catches you, a terrifying picture will appear. Infantata borrows the same music theme from Ao Oni, but makes the game much harder due to lack of saving. Infantata is a unique and refreshing game, but its gameplay can be frustrating. Escape. No Escape is an indie first-person horror game with a mix of Amnesia, Slender, and The Stanley Parable. It features randomly generated levels with dynamic events, a strong narrative, and psychological horror. No Escape has creepy and scary events that will make your skin crawl. At the same time, it features user-friendly interactions, short levels, and a compelling bit of gameplay to appeal to non-horror gamers. No Escape takes the player through a series of corridors within an insane asylum to help solve the mystery of a missing patient. The developer, Working Title, did a great job creating an uneasy atmosphere while maintaining decent gameplay mechanics and some good scares too. Stairs. Stairs is a horror action adventure created by a group of eight students that have formed an indie development team called Greylight. 
Stairs is influenced by classic survival horror games such as Silent Hill and the original Resident Evil titles. Stairs takes place in an abandoned factory where a strange staircase is located. The protagonist started to investigate the area due to claims of paranormal activities to debunk them all. Stairs, for the most part, looks and handles much like Penumbra, so you should expect to have your fair share of jump scares. Most of the game is about tension building and suspense, but for a free game, this should definitely be one for you. Eyes Eyes is a horror game that presents the player with a very simple objective. You need to enter a building in the middle of the night, find 20 bags filled with money, and escape before anyone notices. The idea is to explore every corner of the building, collecting bags of money while being careful not to run into any paranormal presences. If you notice the furniture start to shake, or you start hearing strange sounds, it's time to run away, or else face a horrible creature and near certain death. Throughout the complex, you'll notice eyes drawn on the walls of certain rooms. Touching these drawings will reveal frightening images of different locations within the building. Eyes is a good horror game that brings a new experience with each playthrough, owing to the fact that each time you play, the location of the treasure and the eye drawings are randomized. Hylophobia Hylophobia is a small indie horror game where you must survive in a forest. The idea of the game is to survive your journey through the forest, collecting orbs and avoiding a huge skull. The gameplay is the classic first person control a character who has a GPS and a flashlight. Hylophobia is the irrational fear of trees or forests. And you'll come to realize that when you play the game, anything can be lurking in the trees. While collecting the orbs, a huge skull will pursue you, and you must do your best not to approach it. Or make eye contact with it. Wreck Shudder Wreck Shudder is a horror game based off of the Wreck movies in which you navigate a derelict building, avoiding paranormal occurrences while solving puzzles. The story unravels more as the player progresses through the game, but the main plot is that you're a reporter named Connor, tasked with recording a haunted asylum. The game features an animated camera which has night vision and a shutter effect, making some of the gameplay more photorealistic and lifelike. The game tasks you with filming every action and taking snapshots of paranormal activities. Wreck Shutter includes many gameplay features in the fray, like fear, stealth, and investigation. If you're into trying out something that's a little different from the rest of the games on this list, then play this one for yourself. Avian Avian is a first-person survival horror game that comes with simplistic, almost geometrical graphics in the likes of what you would call pixelated horror. The plot hasn't been described. It's safe to assume that you're a patient of a mental hospital affected by heavy hallucinations. The gameplay revolves around finding the usual keys to gain access to locked areas. Tight corridors you'll have to go through are by far the scariest feature of Avian. Along your playthrough you're going to be dealing with your insane obsession for cats, as well as an obscure voice that is supposedly willing to help. Though as time will pass, you'll most likely start to doubt its behavior, and what's worse, is that regardless of your choices, you'll eventually always run into a monstrous apparition. The shadows of your past come back stronger than ever, and by approaching the real ending, even the certainty of everything being just in your head will fall. It Moves Also known as Creepypasta the Game, It Moves is a horror game that will try to scare you without too many of the typical screamers, instead relying on atmosphere and suspense. Based on the creepypasta Bedtime, It Moves is brought to a fearsome, fleshy, dreadful life by Snow Owl, the game's creator. Made an RPG maker, the game manages to scare, but not startle. 
It's a game that carefully builds its atmosphere using great writing, otherworldly graphics, and some very interesting game mechanics that never resorts to cheap jump scares. The plot revolves around a kid and his realistically scary nightmares about bedtime. It also helps that each of the game's chapters get progressively weirder and more disturbing, with everyday horrors eventually blending into supernatural ones. It's all very smart, very creepy, and amazingly very. Fingerbones is a short psychological horror game that focuses on storytelling and mystery. Progress depends on having a keen eye for detail, on spotting clues, sometimes hidden in plain sight. There's no save function, so be sure you have plenty of time at hand before you attempt this game. The still and silent environment, broken only by moving shadows and dust, makes the atmosphere incredibly unnerving. Fingerbones is more than anything else, a sort of abstract, psychological narrative that'll make your skin crawl the more you explore. Finger Bones is best approached as a sort of interactive short story, and the ending may leave some people confused. But if you relish some disturbing atmosphere and masterful use of sound, this is well worth the play. Blood Moon. Dream of the Blood Moon is a game in which you play as an unknown woman who dreams of the Blood Moon. Your objective is to seek out and find blue tears which will free a tormented girl, but the girl herself is out to kill you. During the dream you will relive the tormented girl's moments before she was tortured and sacrificed and by completing puzzles and keeping a distance to her angry ghost. Eerie. Eerie ruthlessly drops players into a dark and terrifying sewer complex beneath the town of Michigan during the 1960s. With barely a minute to orient themselves, players find themselves trapped and being hunted by monsters with no option but to seek escape. Using the Unreal Engine 3, the game's first person perspective is very impressive. When you're running from danger, the camera will jump and shake, giving you the feeling of running just like it would be in real life. The environments feel appropriately lonely and oppressive, and although it's heavily reliant on jump scares, it still is a pretty great experience, though it never really reaches the more elegant levels of horror of, say, Insanidade or SCP Containment Breach. It takes a while to really get going, but once it does, it'll have you preparing for every noise you hear, even as you're running for your very life. The biggest challenge is largely keeping track of where you've been, especially when you're trying to avoid something while you're on your way to open doors or perhaps look for more keys. But you really can't go wrong with Eerie, as it's completely free and definitely well worth your time. The Groundskeeper The Groundskeeper takes place through the estate of Studeworth. The player must explore dark, creepy cabins, woods, and an abandoned manor. On their journey, they need to find keys, pegs, and tape recorders that will open doors and unlock other areas. Sound is a key component in this game, and the more you play and uncover the mysteries of Studeworth, it becomes clear that there is an entity who pursues you randomly. As you venture even further, more unexplained things begin to happen. For being a freeware horror indie game, the groundskeeper delivers the scares and literally places you into this terrifying environment with some excellent atmosphere. Sixteen Der Unbekannt Krieg. 
This indie game is set in the trenches of Germany, where everything that is found contains letters that are written in German. The actual art style of this game is great, combining the dark black and white setting with the post-apocalyptic environment. This game is set like a maze, which the player will have to make their way through, all the while avoiding mechanized dinosaurs that will chase them down frenetically. While there are weaponry and flares in the game, they don't provide much use against the enemy. It's always best to stay clear of their enemies, rather than attempt to fight them. Free Ice Cream Free Ice Cream is a freeware flash adventure game that is, at the same time, motivating and extremely disturbing. Two young girls, Lily and an unnamed girl, are attracted to the promise of free ice cream and are kidnapped by a crazy and frightening chef. Now the player must help the unnamed girl with the red dress to escape this horrible fate. Despite the cute graphics, there's a dirty and repulsive look to the chef's house, clearly a vile place. The adventure is short and somewhat easy but requires some attention and is absolutely worth playing, although the shock value is extremely high. Pesadelo. Pesadelo, which is Portuguese for Nightmare, is a 3D horror game from Brazilian developers Sky Jazz Gamers, with a free English language beta originally released in 2012. The game tells the story of Alex, a disturbed man seeking to escape a nightmare. The gameplay is similar to Slender, in that your character is dropped off in the area and has to find keys and other small items to progress. You're trapped in a small, industrial location where it's pitch black and the keys are strewn about. The audio is tense as you explore the ruins and tube station. Indeed, when the odd light bulb flickers or door closes, the sounds come out. Pesadelo is most terrifying once you spot your pursuer, or, as is the case most of the time, when they teleport right in front of you or beside you but this event would never make you jump out of your skin if it weren't for the music, which plays once you spot it. If you're a fan of horror gaming, you'd be truly missing out on not trying to survive through the nightmare, or in other words, the Pace Adelo. Within Deep Sorrows Set in the 1990s, you play as Johnston Barker, who is being haunted by a demon in his dreams. It soon becomes clear that the demon is beginning to enter into the real world. Your objective is to destroy your diary, which is hidden in your third dream in the 1950s. However, as you progress, the demon gets stronger and harder to avoid. Throughout the game, your conscience is there to guide you through the never-ending nightmares, providing hints and being your light in the darkness. Within Deep Sorrows is a very dark game, and sudden loud noises. As the player progresses, the demon begins to stalk the player, providing many jump scares. The game should definitely be played with the lights. Life After Us, The System Life After Us is a series of short horror games based in a universe inspired by the stories of Edgar Allan Poe and H.P. Lovecraft. The System, the second in the series, sees you tasked with locating a young woman who suffers from a mental illness. She is believed to have returned to Hawthorne Sanitarium, where she was once a patient. The player explores dark claustrophobic hallways with a flashlight while strange banging noises and breathing can be heard. The game contains a tense atmosphere and will contain a few jump scares and clever horror techniques to keep the player more immersed into the game. SCP-087 Based off the creepy and intriguing SCP Foundations wiki, 
which is a collection of fictional accounts of paranormal creatures and objects. This generated experiment in horror may have you creeped out, or being completely bored. In this game, you're the unnamed explorer forced to walk deeper and deeper down the stairwell. As you continue into the darkness, shadows pass in front of you, noises rise from the bottom of the abyss below, and your breathing only becomes heavier. What lies at the bottom will only be revealed to the most courageous players. Vapor. Vapor is a first-person survival horror game with mixed combat mechanics. While the game gives no plot on what you're supposed to do at the start, you'll play as a deceased warlock wandering the borders of the purgatory looking for redemption. You'll collect items from skeletal outposts and return them to combustion piles. In the game are undead minions, which consist of animated spines and undead hands. You can successfully dispatch them with projectile spells. Vapor's ultimate foe is recognized as the Hell Lord, a dark floating creature that will eventually find you. Terror lies within the images that will precede his coming. Visions that you can't really prevent from being seen will constantly cause you to lose track of where you are, and most importantly, where you were supposed to go. Il Defense Build Defense is a solo project of a horror game inspired in several featured Japanese, Korean, and Spanish movies. The story is set in 1977, as you play a lawyer hired to collect the testament papers in a house, a house which saw a massacre back in the 1930s, carried out by Mr. Il Defense. After his wife left with their children, Mr. Il Defense lost his mind and went on a killing spree before committing suicide. Ildefonso's atmosphere is presented in a number of interesting ways. The game definitely will have you on the edge of your seat. The atmosphere is spot on and perfect for scaring yourself, although it may be a little difficult to find out where to go next. Nevertheless, that gives the game the perfect opportunity to lull you into a false sense of security and terrify you when you least expect it. Jurassic Dark. It takes place in a house where you play as a child who is told by their dad to get a book called Jurassic Dark. He also tells you that there are monsters in the hallways. He gives you a candle and reassures you that there's nothing to be afraid of as the flame keeps you well away from every monster that patiently awaits. He says all the windows should be securely shut so that the wind won't be able to threaten you but it seems like it was a lie, and your pleasant walk suddenly becomes a minefield where you need to avoid the open windows because it drains the candle. Take too long to relight the candle and the monsters will hone in and attack. The slow pace and the appropriately smooth graphics are what makes Abbey Jurassic Dark a unique experience. Kuro Oni Kuro Oni is a Korean fan game, sequel to the popular Ao Oni 3D. You play as Lee Sung Hoon, a young man who stumbles across a mansion with two friends, and they uncover an ancient myth. You're soon separated from your friends, and you must locate a variety of keys and use them to escape. Throughout the game, you'll encounter various Onis, and your goal is to avoid them at all costs. Kuro Oni's graphics may not be that great, but it's the dread tension of knowing the Onis can appear at any given moment at any time that make this game all the more haunting. Nox Timore. Nox Timore, which is Latin for fear at night, doesn't have a story per se, it's just out to make you jump. 
This is a unique horror game, as it doesn't have anything that can harm you, just scare you. Nox Tamore introduces many creepy moments, like mannequins that will stare at you, long corridors, and plenty of dark rooms. If you're a fan of horror indie games, with plenty of jump scares, pick up Nox Tamore. You won't be disappointed. The House 2 The House 2 is the second and newest version of the scary internet flash game, The House. This game is a point-and-click adventure. House 2, like its predecessor, is more of an interactive story with long periods of explorative clicking and moments of heart-pounding terror. Done up in a creepy black and white with a spooky soundtrack and sound effects to match, House 2 definitely continues the atmosphere of the first while telling the story of an entirely different family. If you like the scary stuff, then by all means, definitely play House 2 in the dark, alone with the sound up. If, on the other hand, you don't like jump scares, then you should probably avoid this one. The Crooked Man The Crooked Man is a freeware horror game made with the Wolf RPG editor, a piece of Japanese software similar to the RPG Maker games. It's developed by Yuri and translated by VG Person. The Crooked Man stands from relatable real-life fears, the fear of living a life that's not up to your expectations, or coping with a life when everything seems to go wrong. The game revolves around confronting personal demons and disappointment. Much like Pyramid Head, there's a great deal of meaning behind the Crooked Man, and the game does well to tie his purpose to David's internal struggle, the mystery of the previous tenant, and the plight of each enigmatic character David comes across over the course of the story. The Crooked Man is a classic survival horror experience, stripped of the excessive gameplay and condensed into a tight, powerful three-hour package. It's a free game that doesn't require any extra software. Candles. Candles is a free indie game that uses darkness and spooky sounds to keep the player constantly on edge. Nasty imp creatures have taken over the owner's house and the player must move around carefully. Lighting candles is your only defense to scare them away. The object of the game is simply to light all of the candles within the house and then turn on the generator. The challenge is that the house is infested with a creature that hates the light and will kill you instantly upon touch. This makes for a few tense moments as you dart for the candle or away from the creatures. Although the game isn't terribly scary, it does get very intense at certain points. Its only bad issue is that the game itself can suffer from the occasional glitch and the creatures don't always do what they're supposed to do, but for the most part, the presentation and atmosphere make this game worth a play. Seven Days This game has very little plot or background, but what we know so far is that the player wakes up in the bedroom of a house. Their goal is to try and leave the house, but the catch is that every time they try, the exit somehow eludes them, and they inevitably will find a note, which in turn reading it causes them to wake up in the bed again. Each time they leave the room, things get stranger and scarier. Although the game does have its fair share of jump scares and intense chases, most of the real scariness comes when you're submersed in the subtly surreal and creepy environment when nothing is happening, but you know that literally anything could happen. Due to the nature of the game, it's best that you experience it yourself. SCP-087-B SCP-087-B is a slightly odd generated experiment in horror that will either have players jumping out of their seats or yawning dismissively. 
SCP-087-B takes place in a series of staircases, corridors, and rooms that lead the player down into the dark. The corridors are narrow and claustrophobic. If something happens, there's nowhere to run, and the entire area is veiled in near darkness, with only four or five feet of each area visible at any one time. As most of the game takes place in the narrow corridors, all you can do is look into the darkness ahead, and that's where the paranoia creeps in. Staring into the darkness for so long plays tricks on your mind, never quite sure if there really was a pair of eyes staring at them through the dark, or if they merely imagined it. When you descend, each level is marked by a number plaque on the wall. Maybe it's the slow pace of the character, lack of music, and claustrophobic environment that makes this game truly unnerving. Al-Oni Al-Oni is a freeware indie game made with RPG Maker. It plays a lot like the original Clock Tower game. It originally was released in Japan and has since been translated to English. You take control, of course, of a high schooler named Hiroshi, who along with three other friends decide to explore the abandoned mansion on the outskirts of town that is said to be, and you've guessed it, haunted. Your goal is to move Hiroshi through a series of 2D top-down rooms exploring the mansion and trying to find a way to escape after something tries to trap you inside. Ao Oni plays pretty much like your standard Japanese adventure puzzle game, whether you're gathering items trying to solve puzzles or find clues and backtrack of clues. Now, what's different about this game though, is that when you make your way through the mansion, you'll constantly be stalked by a giant Aoni, which is Japanese for Blue Demon. You'll really never know for sure the demon will give up chasing you or simply surprise you while you're trying to hide in a closet. In this just simple addition, it simply makes the game a lot like Clock Tower, and it makes Aoni a incredibly tense game to play. Bewilder House Bewilder House is a fun little house of horrors where you're trapped in a maze. The goal on each floor is to find the room highlighted in a green circle on your map. Your main adversary in the game is the fun house itself. It will turn you around, rearrange yourself when you're not looking. It will do everything in its supernatural power to disorient you. You'll also find that you're not alone in this fun house. A rather frightening clown also stalks you, moving only when out of sight. And mechanical eyeballs observe you constantly. Bewilder House is a game that unfortunately didn't explain much about it plot-wise, but the experience is intense, engaging, and unlike any other freeware horror indie game out there. The Last Door In an abandoned mansion set in Victoria, London, you play as Jeremiah DeVitt who receives a letter from his old schoolmate, Anthony Beechworth, with a hidden cryptic message. He knows something is very wrong. However, as his journey is only beginning, as he starts to discover secrets about his friend and the secret organization that controlled them, but some things are not meant to be known, and some doors are best left closed. The gameplay is typical for a point-and-click adventure game. You walk around the area, Pick up items that might be useful, and apply them at the right location. The last door proves it can have a serious and haunting tone while also looking great. Each area, object in person, is detailed and easy to make out, but also uses many different shades of the same color so that it's good to look at, but still maintaining that grim setting. Not only can this game be played for free, but if you choose to purchase Season 2, you also get to see more of the story. Forget Me Not Annie Forget Me Not Annie is a first-person psychological horror game created with the Unreal Engine that revolves around puzzle-solving and platforming. In this game, 
players take on the role of Annie, a girl who is locked in her own mind, whose only friend is Howard, a grotesque and oversized teddy bear. Forget Me Not Annie lets the player explore 3D environments and interact with objects in a special way, which is by using Annie's telekinetic powers. Players use Annie's powers to solve various puzzles that advance them forward in the game. To do this, they must also use Howard's skills. He can pull objects towards him, so players can make use of the new objects as well. The key to being successful in this game is to combine both Annie and Howard's powers together. Home From Work Home From Work is a game set in a modern house which has paranormal activities such as unknown sounds, misplaced objects, and more. The player gets to investigate the house and find clues to what is actually happening. It's actually clear that you'll begin to discover that you're not the only one in the house. Home From Work is much like the game Paranormal, except without the camera, and many times you'll wander about different rooms and areas and they'll change over time, such as furniture being tossed aside or lights flickering, shadows lurking in the hallways. Home From Work is an interesting take on the horror indie genre, and it should definitely be a game that you put on your radar to pick up and play. Misao. Misao is a freeware horror game by Miscreant's Room, created with the Wolf RPG editor. The same group went on to create Mad Father. As the story goes, Misao was just an ordinary high school student who didn't particularly stand out at all, until three months ago when she just stopped coming to class. And she wasn't at home either. Though nobody knew what happened to her, rumors started spreading that she already had passed away. As they joke about the idea of her haunting the school and cursing her classmates, a sudden earthquake takes out the lights and Aki hears a voice pleading for help. Separated from the others, she sets out to discover the truth behind Misao's disappearance and the curse. Much similar to Corpse Party, this game is a horror adventure focused on exploration, puzzle solving, and a scavenger hunt type mechanic. You take the role of Aki and explore the haunted school, filled with death traps and plagued by evil spirits. To clear the game, you have to collect six parts that will help you lift the curse from the school and return you to your world. There is no battle against the spirits in this game. You will have to outsmart the evil beings haunting the school to get items for your next clue. There are several death traps and vengeful spirits roaming the school. Curiosity and the adventurous spirit can easily punish the off-guard player. Witch. Witch has a very unique visual style and interesting background music, making it one of the scariest games to play alone on this list. It's a short horror adventure game about escaping from a house that the players are trapped in. They are endlessly stalked by a headless figure that seems to teleport around the house, making the game really tense at times, and more often than not, this particular jump scare, which is accompanied by static effects, is what causes this game to be absolutely terrifying. The distinctly dreamlike brightness gives this game a unique feeling of captivity and tension. I'm scared. Despite its simple appearance graphic wise, this first person psychological horror pulls no punches when it comes to making sure you double check every narrow corridor you come across and definitely teaches you those other uppity horror games that terror doesn't have to be flashy. You spend a majority of the game wandering through narrow corridors and small rooms that are incredibly claustrophobic. What makes I'm Scared a psychological masterpiece isn't creeping around in the darkness with a first person view, nor is it the heavy ambient sounds that make you horrified by everything you see and don't see. It's what happens outside the game. The player opens these up, 
and the text file mentions something about entities becoming data. It seems that one of the game's glitches has taken on a life of its own, and wants the player to continue the game. I'm Scared leaves you with the haunting suspicion that you've just awoken a horrific soulless nightmare of a virus that never leaves your computer. is an interesting atmospheric game that packs a lot into the experience, despite its limited content and simple premise. It's certainly one of the more engaging, immersing titles out there, dripping with melancholy, longing, and despair. Hide is all about finding five signs scattered across a map, while avoiding being found. The more signs the player finds, the more difficult the game becomes. With each discovery of a new location, the pursuing forces will increase in both numbers and variety. The visuals are effective at conjuring mystery and distorting reality because there's essentially no depth perception. You look at something at a distance and you can't really tell what it is until you've gotten closer and walked around it. This creates a sense of intrigue. You spot a grotesque looking smudge on the horizon, wonder what it is and watch as it slowly becomes clearer the closer you get to it. The sound design in this game is also really creepy, and very unnerving too. Hide is one of those games where it's not a good idea to go towards the light. The White Chamber the White Chamber is a point-and-click horror adventure game in which the player takes the role of an unnamed young woman who literally wakes up from a coffin on board a space station. She has no idea how she got there, and her name is never mentioned. Throughout most of the game, the music is basically non-existent, leaving the player to the ambience of computers and machines humming around. The music, when it does arrive, is very sinister and quite good. It pumps the atmosphere even more. Overall, The White Chamber is a very creepy game. It will make you nervous, it will make you uncomfortable, and it will keep you coming back for more until you finally see a conclusion. Yume Nikki. Yume Nikki is a freeware indie game for the PC that stars an open world dreamscape. This is a quality title that has a cult following that takes gaming in a different direction. The story of the game is about a girl who falls asleep in her apartment. She then enters a world of 12 doors, with each door leading to another world and many other worlds after that, making a large environment for the player to explore. There is no spoken line of dialogue in the entire game. The game really is for those who like exploring worlds, who like cryptic and symbolic plots, surreal landscapes, and trippy moments. This is a deeply atmospheric title, with some of the most disturbing backdrops ever put in a video game. The basic idea is that players who have been in similar situations and worked with similar office jobs will relate themselves to the game setting and scenario and become immersed. How many times have we stayed late at work, being the last to leave the office or complex, having this weird feeling of walking through an environment that used to be bustling with people, only to be quieter now than a cemetery? Black Curtain Studios offers a first-person horror exploration, which instead plays with the feeling of loneliness, oppression, and helplessness. The storyline is presented with short monologues, displaying the thoughts of the player, as you need to perform certain tasks to proceed in the game, to continue to discover new clues about what's going on. 
You can use your surroundings to your advantage and hide under desks and in corners to avoid being taken by the ghost which haunts the office. The plot is to survive the night and find as many clues as you can about the threat. such as Paranormal Activity, VHS, and the Blair Witch Project. It's designed to be a fully dynamic haunting simulator. The game style is reminiscent of found footage films, as the player directs a new homeowner's attempts to capture his house's ever-intensifying supernatural manifestations via an in-universe camera. Paranormal is an experience that is all about its atmosphere, visuals, and sound. It simply has an incredible atmosphere that is brilliantly executed, and it does wonders to make you feel claustrophobic, alone, and helpless. The best part is the game's unique dynamic scares concept, which, thanks to the game's complex action, reaction, and randomization system, ensures that you won't get the same experience twice. You need to play this game multiple times, because there's plenty to see and multiple ways that it can go down. It's an ambitious system, and for the most part, it works really great. There is a time limit on the number of things a player can do each day, as the camera's battery life slowly diminishes. Paranormal is exceptionally well done, very creepy, and incredibly atmospheric. It's a wonderfully unique and compelling concept that is executed very impressively, and the fact that it begs you to play it multiple times only sweetens the incentive to get it. SCP Containment Breach SCP Containment Breach is a freeware indie game that somehow manages to be scarier than all of the recent big-budget horror titles combined. The game casts players as Class D inmates of the SCP Foundation. Things take a turn for the worse when the inmates are supposed to enter the chamber of SCP-173. The doors fail to close, and the SCP escapes. Much like the weeping angels of Doctor Who, the SCP-173 will pursue the player only when they are not looking at them. The game has an eye meter, which counts down the seconds between blinks. Leave it too long, and shut your eyes momentarily, long enough for you to be pounced on. Your goal is to make it out of the facility, although your chances are extremely low. Along the way, you will encounter several more SCPs, which can either aid or hinder your progress. As you find items to ease your escape, you may also find clues as to who or what is responsible for the containment breach. Containment breach is a low-budget game, having been made in the Boots 3D engine, and while it's lacking in the visuals department, it more than makes up for it in its gameplay. Exploring the lockdown facility is a terrifying and utterly nerve-wracking experience. Thanks to the superb audio, which works perfectly with the scares and enhancing the tension so that you literally jump out of your seat with alarming frequency. Coupled to this are the creepy environments, which will have you peering reluctantly around the corner, desperately hoping that nothing lurks beyond. Blackwell Asylum In Blackwell Asylum, you play a female patient in an asylum attempting to escape from the wardens. Everything appears strange, wavy, and distorted. You must creep silently by enemies and navigate the hallways, often hiding in, behind, or underneath furniture. The enemies will also open and close doors to look for sudden noises and even turn off lights when they suspect a room to be empty. The drugging aspect at the beginning of the game really plays deep into the overall feel of Black Whale Asylum. You don't walk down the hallway in this game, you weave down the hallway, desperately trying to reach the next door. The hallways themselves are modeled in the best surrealist fashion. There's no combat, so if you're spotted, be prepared to run and hide. 
It's the same system as Amnesia, and it works just as well here. The game also has a clever system for when you're in hiding. If you hide while the warden's around, you have to manage your breathing by pressing the spacebar at regular intervals. If you mess up, the outer edges of the screen cuts your field of view. It's a simple mechanic, but further serves to heighten the tension. The sound design in Blackwell Asylum will quite literally set your teeth on edge. The only audio through most of the game is the swishing of your character's dress. Maybe a footstep, that's about it. Things will suddenly change when a warden yells and asks what you're doing out of bed and gives chase. Blackwell's Asylum is a game worth checking out if you are horror. Insanidade. Insanidade is a freeware horror game created by a group of Brazilians called Vedeo Arte. The game is in Portuguese. In general terms, it's a very atmospheric, psychological horror game inspired by Cry of Fear. Insanidade is built up masterfully, becoming more and more intense as you progress. As you play through the game, each level gets progressively more horrifying and difficult to survive. The player has to navigate through creepy corridors and cells with mad doctors, experiments, and what appears to be ghouls. The whole time, your only source of light is a mobile phone, providing a small light source in the otherwise complete darkness ahead. With major credit gone to the presentation, Insanidade offers an atmosphere of helplessness, chilling sound design, and unique jump scares. Cry of Fear Cry of Fear is a psychological single-player and co-op horror game that was originally a mod for Half-Life. Set in the same vein as the classic survival horror games of old, it was made by the team Psych Scholar and is now a full game completely for free. It's set in a deserted town filled with horrific creatures and a nightmarish delusion. You play as Simon desperately searching for answers in the cold night, finding his way through the city as he slowly descends into madness. The atmosphere of Cry of Fear is excellently well done. For horror games to work, you need to fill the player with a sense of dread, and Cry of Fear does just that. It's very easy to create an experience that frightens people, but it's an altogether different accomplishment to create something that makes a person scare themselves. While the game has its fair share of jump scares, the majority of your own fright comes from staring down long passageways, wondering what's in store for you. The real fear comes from the anticipation of encounters with enemies, whether they jump at you or not. This feeling of helplessness, coupled with the dimly lit environments and eerie soundtrack, results in a long-lasting experience of psychological fear throughout the game. Team Psych Scholar deserves much respect and praise for the depth of the interpretation Cry of Fear offers. Each element of the game works synergistically, providing a polished gameplay experience portraying Simon's inner struggle. All too often, this game is dismissed as a survival horror game, when it's really a human game commenting on the complex, overwhelming emotional exhaustion and psychological pain we endure after traumatic experiences.